today I have some free time in Narita Airport, so rather than hanging around here, I'm going to go and check out the actual city, Narita City. It's a little neglected as a tourist destination, but people do often come here when they have a long stay at Narita Airport. Generally speaking, there are two main reasons people come to Narita. The big Buddhist temple, uh, Narita San Shinshoji, and for this pleasant shopping street, uh, Omote Sando. Now several roads in Japan are called Omote Sando, including one that gives its name to a very upmarket area of Tokyo. Here they have a nice traditional shopping street with lots of old-fashioned eateries and gift shops. It very much put me in mind of Shibamata, but on a larger scale. Here we are at the entrance to Narita San Shinshoji. Narita San Shinshoji is a prominent Buddhist temple, first established in 940 to commemorate a military victory. Its prominence and popularity greatly increased in the 17th century under the Tokugawa shogunate. Today it remains popular as a place of worship and also for its beautiful gardens and its frequent fire rituals. Mm, we're passing through the Nyomon Gate. Buddhist temples in Japan and elsewhere often have a Nyomon Gate with a guardian deity on either side. Ni o Mon translates as Two Kings Gate, and this particularly handsome example dates from 1831. Through the gate, you'll find two ponds and then a staircase up to the main temple area. This is a beautiful place. I definitely should have come here sooner. On either side of the staircase is modern but attractive stonework, complementing the pond with its fish and turtles. Like many Japanese temples, Narita San Shinshoji is on high ground and the staircase will lead you to the wide open main courtyard. This is my personal favourite part of the temple, the three-storied pagoda. The three-storied pagoda is one of the oldest extant buildings in the complex, having been built in 1712. The only older surviving building, the Kōmyō-dō, was built in 1701, but has been moved away from where it originally stood to make way for the newer main hall. The temple was built after a rebellion was quashed, to house an image of Buddhist deity Fudo myo -o, also known as Achara. The statue had been brought to Narita to bring divine support to the Emperor's troops, and the story goes that after victory was assured, the statue refused to be moved, so the temple was built around it. These buildings date from a period the temple's popularity surged, when the statue was displayed in Edo, or modern-day Tokyo. Prominent kabuki actor Ichikawa Danjuro played Fudo myo -o in a wildly popular play at the time, crediting the birth of his son and successor to his having prayed to Fudo myo -o at Narita-san. He and his descendants, or kabuki actors, some adopted, became devoted patrons. The pagoda and adjacent buildings, including the bell tower, were built during this period of expansion and prosperity. As with many temples of its age, it shares quite a lot aesthetically with the Chinese temples that I'm more used to, as opposed to the earthy tones that are more associated with Japanese temples and shrines. And the coin flowing puts me in mind of that aesthetic too. Yeah. Okay. The main temple is not a very ancient edifice, but it's well worth a visit anyway. Uh, it was really enhanced for me by a guy uh, chanting his Buddhist sutras. A lovely holy place. Ladder. For me, the most impressive part of the visit was exploring the temple's expansive grounds. There's a lovely garden here with this wonderful, huge Ishidoro. Didn't mind having that one in my garden. What a wonderful place for a wonder on a cool late summer afternoon, missing loved ones. This is a graveyard, of course, but uh, that doesn't mean it's creepy or strange to be here. It's wonderfully peaceful and, and a great respite from, you know, the pace of the city. I've been going to the Aoyama Cemetery quite a lot recently just because it's convenient for work. That's this place right here. For those of us who love stonework and these kinds of Ishidoro stone lanterns, there's so much great stuff to see in these places where we can remember the departed. That said, I guess somewhat oddly it does feel a lot more strange and disrespectful to be filming one of these vlogs in a graveyard. So I'm going to stop right now. But in fairness, that's not really comparing like for like. You know, this is not a crowded city cemetery. This is the grounds of a quite beautiful temple. This has a completely different feeling to it. I'm really happy I came here. I could stay here a long, long time. And 
know I say this a lot, but I should definitely do this more often. Everything about this place, this setting, this aesthetic is what I want for my home. Although, of course, it would have to be in miniature. See, I don't think that would fit in my garden. This is the Heiwa no Dai To, or Great Pagoda of Peace, built in 1984. None of this stuff is particularly old, but, you know, it still makes for an interesting place for tourists to visit. Still being, of course, devotional and in line with tradition. Well, some form of tradition. Inside can be found a newer image of Fudo-sama, the Buddhist deity. A lot of this is just brand new and squeaky clean. Although, at least the gardens have the feeling of being here since time immemorial. There are even parts they're working on right now. Of course, especially here in earthquake-prone Japan, the sheer age of the structures isn't always the point. More important is the sheer amount of time this has been, you know, hallowed ground. Some structures like this one were built in the early 1700s, but of course they've been moved around, damaged, reconstructed, in this case physically moved across the site several times. Well, you know, I mean, one of these things has happened several times. I'm not saying they're constantly moving the thing around. While personally I do find the older structures to be cooler and more historically significant, the ancient parts and the modern parts should really be considered together as a unified whole. With all things considered, I'm really enjoying my time here at Narita-san Shinshoji. Several of the buildings are beautiful, internally and externally, but in the end, and it's not really a rarity for me, it's the garden that I ended up loving the most. My visit over, it was time for a spot of lunch. Now when you come to Narita, the local speciality is unagi, and many of these restaurants know it and price accordingly. Yeah, regular, reasonable... What? Luckily I found affordable unagi in this cozy little restaurant. With some super rustic toilet. Unadon, short for unagi donburi, is a traditional Japanese dish that I enjoy. It comprises eel in a rich kabayaki sauce on rice. Honestly speaking, I don't think eel is the nicest meat in the known universe, but the sauce is really delicious, and somehow, when all the elements come together, it's really quite delicious. Tasty, and half the price of everywhere else I saw. All right, well, that was a lot of fun. Narita gets full marks from me for a place to spend half a day. Now, it's time for me to head back to work. Womp womp. Two main reasons people come to Narita. 